Welcome to the Dragoon 1 to 100 leveling skills guide. I'll be going over all of your skills as you train to be threatened with a job rework, but not have it happen, better than the rest of them, but also hopefully kill your enemies along the way. Watch as you go from this, welcome to Dragoon's Anonymous, I am named Kyle, to this. This is a beginner focused series aimed to help those new to Final Fantasy XIV, the MMO genre, or still just need a little help. In that same vein, this will be focused on your actions and how to use them. We'll not be going deep into optimization, instead focused on the general play and giving general opening rotations. We will go through these together in order to help new players understand the process. If you wish to push your play further, there are further places you could research the job. The goal here is to drop players in on the ground level so they can make strides to improve themselves. Tooltips are broken up by expansion and that expansion's level cap. So level 50 for A Realm Reborn, 60 for Heavensward, 70 for Stormblood, 80 for Shadowbringers, 90 for Endwalker, and our final level cap of 100 in Dawn Trail. I recommend all players add Sprint and Limit Break to their hotbars, both found in the General tab of the Actions menu. And as for how my hotbars build, it'll make sense at 100. Just put your skills on your hotbars so that you are comfortable as you play. Everyone has their own way of doing things. If you want more info on the how and why I set up my UI, check the description for a video about it. Finally, keep in mind that this is an active MMO. Patches can and will change jobs. Check the description for a quick overview of each patch's changes or special notes. With all that out of the way, please support me in whatever way you can, check my links below, and let's begin. Dragoon is simply described as a train. It isn't the fastest or the most flexible in the base rotation, but it will get you where you're going without a bump in the ride. Yet, it also ends up being a busy job in its own way. You have long combo strings that are technically infinite in length when you consider the full toolkit. You alternate two linear combos for maximum power, and rarely deviate from this. The main thing with Dragoon is jumps and your OG CDs. Each jump has an animation lock of some kind, and they are a key part of a lot of your damage, along with many other skills. Being busy like this and the very negligible animation lock end up being sticking points for the job, despite it being very minor. But if you find yourself enjoying Dragoon, you'll be rewarded with a very consistent job with some secret flexibility. To play a Lancer, you either start as one or pick the class up in the Gridania Lancers Guild after completion of your level 10 class quest as your first class. Let's get into the finer details of each skill. Level 1, True Thrust. This is a basic attacking global cooldown and all we have for a few levels. It does 170 potency of damage to an enemy. Spam this over and over to level up a bit. Level 4, Vorpal Thrust. This is a combo off of True Thrust. Alone it does 100 potency of damage. If you hit True Thrust first, your combo will light up like so, and lets Vorpal Thrust do 250 potency of damage to the target. Always follow along your combos for maximum damage and I will not be mentioning the non-combo potencies from now on. You're now going to alternate True Thrust and Vorpal Thrust to kill your enemies. Level 6, Life Surge. On a 40 second cooldown, this is our first off-global or OGCD ability. It lasts for 5 seconds and ensures the next weapon skill you use will do critical hit damage. This is a key distinction since Dragoon has a heavy emphasis on attacking abilities. It also will heal a very small portion of the damage. It's not that great, but it does heal. This has one main use, buff your strongest weapon skill to guarantee it does critical damage. At this moment, that is going to be Vorpal Thrust. We've in Life Surge after True Thrust so that your Vorpal will do critical damage. We'll talk more about this later as we'll be moving Life Surge to buff other attacks. Level 8 is the first of our roll actions, Second Wind. I will not be going over it or any of our roll actions here. All of your roll actions are extremely important. Find room for them on your bars, and if you need a guide for them, head to the description or the corner card for a video on it. There is also Leg Sweep at level 10, and Bloodbath at level 12. Level 15, Piercing Talon. This is the first of our skills that is locked behind class or job quests. Do your quests and get your skills. This is the only time I will bring it up verbally but it will always appear in the corner when a skill is quest locked. Avoid this button as much as you can. It's not great. It does 150 potency of damage, but you can use it from up to 20 yams away from the target. There are a few places that you will be out of range of an enemy to use this. Later levels, we have better options for distance. Get into the habit of not needing to use Piercing Talon. 
It tends to be a trap many newbies fall into that they rely on their ranged attack even when they have no reason to. The good news is, any situation where you actually do need Piercing Talon, it will not break your combo. Level 18, Disembowel. This is the second of our combos. You combo this off of True Thrust, branching off away from Voipal Thrust. It deals a weaker 210 potency of damage to a target. In exchange, you get a 10% damage boost for 30 seconds called Power Surge. This is a buff you want to always be maintaining. There's further benefits to this combo later down the line. For now, you will want to do a Disembowel combo, then do 5 Vorpal Thrust combos to fill out the 30 second timer. We'll be seeing a lot more of this buff going forward. At level 22, we have Faint for our next roll action. Level 26, Full Thrust. This is the third hit to our first combo. After Vorpal Thrust, we can use Full Thrust. This does a much higher 380 potency of damage. As a result of being higher, we're going to move Life Surge over to here. We want to guarantee a critical hit on Full Thrust over anything else. So anytime you use Vorpal Thrust and Life Surge is available, weave it in so you can critical hit your Full Thrust. As for a full rotation, do the Disembowel combo, then three Full Thrust combos before repeating. Level 30, Lance Charge. On a 60 second cooldown, this increases all damage we deal by 10% for 20 seconds. Simply use this on cooldown and combat. This allows us to get two full thrusts into the window. Remember to get used to popping it whenever it's available, as it comes around pretty often. For now, that's all that you have to think about. If you're fighting, you want Lance Charge running. To obtain the Dragoon job, you must first reach level 30 and complete the level 30 Lancer quest. Additionally, complete the main scenario quest, Self Management, which is at level 20 in the story. Return to the guild and the quest should be there for you. Level 30, Jump. On a 30 second cooldown, this does a unique jumping attack with a 20 yarm range that does 250 potency of damage. It's an attack we want to use after we have put up Lance Charge and Disembowel to boost the damage it does. Given the cooldown, you will get two jumps for every use of Lance Charge. Don't forget about it, since the damage adds up fast. Use it on cooldown. Keep in mind there is a very short animation lock involved in this attack. If you use it as you run, you'll stop moving for a split second. This doesn't come into play really at all, at least not these days. Once you've gotten used to the animation lock even a little, you're basically golden for the rest of Dragoon. When we hit 32, we get the roll action, Arm's Length. Level 35, Elusive Jump. On a 30 second cooldown, this is a utility skill that causes you to jump backwards 15 yams. You go pretty far and pretty quickly. The newbie mistake is to only use this to get away from bosses. It can be used for this and get you into a safe position or avoid enemy AoEs. In most cases, a short walk is more than enough. Instead of a gap creator, you can use this as a gap closer. Anytime you need to walk, or better yet, sprint, out of range of a boss, backflip back into range. If you backflip out of range, walk, or sprint back in. The thing to keep in mind is that it is always a jump backwards, which makes aiming potentially difficult. Playing on legacy keyboard controls, you can just press S to turn around for dodging an enemy AoE, and now you're perfectly aimed to jump back in with Elusive. Careful you don't hit the button mid character turn or just tap S. You may end up backflipping into a different direction. Elusive Jump is a very strong movement and dodging tool in the hands of someone willing to experiment with it. Level 40, Doom Spike. This is our first AoE or area of effect. It does a line AoE in the direction of your current target. This line is 10 yams long and decently wide. Given it is a line, you have to learn how to aim it a bit differently to other AoEs and hope the tank knows how to position enemies. When there are three or more enemies, you want to be using Doom Spike over your main combos. You can take time to put up Power Surge, especially if the tank is pulling multiple groups. While running, put up Power Surge, and then start spamming Doom Spike when the tank stops running. Don't forget we also have a Lance Charge. 10% more damage on AoE is great, especially if the tank is wall-to-wall -wall pulling. You will also want to be using your other cooldowns like Jump. It may only be a single target hit, but it's still more damage. Maybe one enemy is a bit healthier than the others, or the party is missing it with their AoEs. Also be sure to use Life Surge on AoE. It will crit on every enemy hit, not just the one enemy. Level 45, Winged Glide. 
New to Dawn Trail is Winged Glide. It has a 60 second cooldown and has a 20 yom range. This is slightly larger than Elusive Jump, having the same range as Piercing Talon. Winged Glide is a gap closer right to the selected enemy, stopping at the edge of their target circle. This is a less flexible counterpart to Elusive Jump. This also makes it easier to use. Anytime you are forced out of range of a boss or enemies, use Winged Glide to get right back into the action. This way you can save Elusive Jump as a gap creator or a backup gap closer. Another use is for running with the tank. If you fall behind as they sprint off to collect enemies, use the Winged Glide on the enemies to catch up. You can also start a boss with it, since you'll be immediately in melee range. It has nearly as many uses as Elusive Jump, despite it only working in one direction and only on enemies. Both skills together can make Dragoon able to zoom all over, no problem. Our final role action comes into play with True North at level 50. Level 50, Chaos Thrust. This is the third hit to our Disembowel combo. This has several new things to go over. First off, this will do a small 220 potency of damage on hit. However, this is our first positional. If we hit the enemy from the rear, as shown by the given image, it will do 260 potency of damage. Solo, we won't really go for positionals. When you're in a party, we will always go for this positional. On top of that, this is a dot or damage over time effect. The dot is applied to the enemy and lasts for 24 seconds, dealing 40 potency of damage. Dots work on the server tick, so they do damage every 3 seconds. Divide the length of the dot by 3, and you get 8 ticks of damage for a total 320 potency dot. In total with a positional hit, that is 580 potency of damage, stronger than even full thrust. This does not mean you are going to life surge that chaos thrust. Life Surge only applies to the direct damage, not the dot. Dots can crit, but Life Surge would have no effect on the dot. In the end, simply make sure you're using this on single target. If the enemy will live for the entire duration, it will do a lot of damage. If there are two enemies, you can dot both of them back and forth. The timer will last more than long enough on both enemies. You'll even have time for a full thrust combo, it's so long. This timer is perfect later on though. Level 50, Dragonfire Dive. On a long 2 minute cooldown, this is an AoE jump that works as a gap closer. It has the same short animation lock jump has. It does 500 potency to the selected target and 250 potency to all enemies within 5 yarms of that initial target. This is very powerful. Anytime the opportunity presents itself, buff it with power surge and land charge for huge AoE damage. Just because it is AoE, doesn't mean you only use it for AoE. A 500 potency hit is huge for a singular target. You will still use this on bosses and on cooldown. If you can use it for AoE, make sure you do though. Also, the gap closing effect can be useful. Instead of using Winged Glide, your Dragonfire Dive Weave will put you right next to the boss. Now let's plop all this stuff into an opener. We have a lot of OGCD abilities to weave in, and that's a major theme of Dragoon. We're going to try and order them in a specific way that is ideal for later on, even if not technically optimal at this point. But let's go through it before we talk about more. True Thrust, Disembowel, Lance Charge, Chaos Thrust, Jump, True Thrust, Dragonfire Dive, Vorpal Thrust, Life Surge, Full Thrust, True Thrust, Vorpal Thrust, Full Thrust. It's a pretty simple opening overall, just because we have little to go off of. We start with the Disembowel combo to get our Power Surge buff and dot the enemy. Land Charge here will buff all of our attacks for this opener, so it's important to use this before using our OGCDs. With buffs up, we start with Jump because it's on a short cooldown and it'll be used often. Then we Dragonfire Dive to get it out. Life Surge fits in right after for buffing Full Thrust. From there, we Full Thrust again before starting the base rotation over. Chaos Thrust combo into two Full Thrust combos. From here, just use your stuff on cooldown. You should get one jump between every Lance Charge, and every second jump should be able to be used with Lance Charge running. When Dragonfire Dive comes off of cooldown, Lance Charge will be running then too. I would also like to note that ideally, we will use Life Surge under buffs. But due to the mismatched cooldown timers, this is something we'll only get to see at higher levels. Mostly just use it on cooldown for now. For an AoE opener, I want to lead with that this idea is not so simple. 
AoE isn't handled like your typical boss fight. There's a lot of other factors to take into account. We don't want to be doing our burst phase the moment the tank pulls the first group of enemies. We want to go all in only once they stop. This tends to be at the end of a wall-to-wall -wall pull. We can do things during the run though. While sprinting along with the tank, you can attempt a Chaos Thrust on an enemy or two. At the very least, we're going to put Disembowel up. The extra damage from Power Surge in AoE is great to have, especially if Dragonfire Dive is available. That's such a big hit to buff. So try to get in some pot shots while running between groups of enemies. Then unleash the dragon when you get to the end. Which also means jump going last. It's a single target attack that doesn't do anything else. It's free damage so you do want to use it, but it's by far the least important button for AoE. That's the end of our kit for A Realm Reborn. Things start out pretty basic, but we'll see things slowly ramp up. That begins with the toolkit in Heaven's Ward. Level 52, Battle Litany. On the long 120 second cooldown, Battle Litany has a 30 yarm radius to buff you and all allies in range. The critical hit rate of everyone is increased by 10% for 20 seconds. Openers follow the pattern of buff up, then unleash everything, so using this in an opener will buff everyone even further. Other than making sure you are stacking buffs and only using this mid-fight, just use it on cooldown to make sure everyone is getting some big buffs. Despite what you might think, you will also use Life Surge still. They do not have synergy, but you should still use it since the chance at critting is still far from 100%. Level 54, Enhanced Jump. This is very simply a power boost to jump. It has increased to 320 potency. This trait only exists as a result of changes over many years. Level 56, Fang and Claw. This is the fourth hit of our fourth rest combo. It deals a 260 potency hit to a target, or 300 potency when done on the target's flank. The picture on screen shows the flanks now, which is their sides. Practice on the fact that this is a flank positional rather than a rear positional like Chaos Thrust. The power of this attack might be lower than Full Thrust, but it still brings up the average power of the combo. It also leads into other attacks later on. Level 58, Wheeling Thrust. Speaking of Chaos Thrust, this is the exact same skill as Fang and Claw, but a rear positional and given by using Chaos Thrust. Now you're going to do a double rear positional, Chaos into Wheeling. Otherwise, that's all there is to it. Use this combo hit like normal. Level 60, Gear Skogel. On a 60 second cooldown, this is an OGCD line AoE. It has a 15 yarm range, making it bigger than your base AoE. It does 200 potency to the first enemy, and reduces to 100 potency for all other enemies. It also comes with a new gauge, a timer. This is Blood of the Dragon, buffing your damage by 10% for the 20 second duration. Between this and Lance Charge, we can see Dragoon works on 60 second cycles. We'll use these together, giving us extra power due to buffs being multiplicative, buffing each other. Aside from making sure to use this after land charge and battle litany, where applicable, use this on cooldown. It buffs everything else we do, and is a great bonus AoE attack. Let's get into the next opener. Most of what we got this expansion is going into our opener in some form, if nothing else, for the practice of using them. But of course, a skill we don't use is just wasted. This is essentially the same opener, just with everything slotted in. We put Battle Litany with Land Charger as our first double weave, the first of what will become every single weave slot later on. They have the same length, and we want both of these up before Gears Gogol, so they buff it. Further, the fact that buffs multiply together is starting to crop up with parties. You aren't the only job that got a buff that helps the whole party. Burst phases are important due to everyone firing off their strongest hits and their buffs. This makes our timing matter a lot. With Wheeling Thrust lengthening our combo, Gears Gogol fits in right where Jump used to be. Gears Gogol will have further benefits later on, but at this point the fact that it will further buff the rest of the opener means we want it out earlier than most other attacks. Afterwards, it's the same as usual. Throw out our jumps, use the Life Surge on our big hit, and then get back to alternating back and forth between combos. Use Chaos combo, then the True Thrust combo, then repeat. For AoE, the same rules apply. Buff up before you worry about Dragonfire Dive. Gears Gogol will fit in right after we use the actual buffs, but before Dragonfire. Jump is still the least important skill for AoE, but it's there. Heaven's Void feels like just more of the same. 
And it kind of is. It extended our combo and gave us an extra buff to use. Gaskogel is just an extra attack. Stormblood is going to be the second half that really solidifies what Dragoon is. Level 62, Sonic Thrust. We now have an AoE combo. It's no longer just Doomspike spam. After Doomspike, this does 120 potency to all enemies hit. That's not a big deal, but the fact that this gives Power Surge is. You will still want to try and pre-apply Power Surge in wall-to-wall -wall pulling if you can, but you can use your AoE combo instead. You've probably noticed it can be frustrating to use single target attacks on moving enemies. It's much easier to throw out AoE attacks just to get the buff going. Always make sure to combo Sonic Thrust for AoE. Level 64, Drake Spain. This is a skill that is replacing a feature of Dragoon that has existed since Stormblood. This is the fifth hit of our combo strings. It is 380 potency, the same as Full Thrust, making it a good place to use Life Surge. The weird part about this is that it cannot be assigned to the hotbar. Drake's Bane will replace Fang and Claw or Wheeling Thrust. In the Full Thrust combo, the fourth hit is Fang and Claw. After Fang and Claw, Wheeling Thrust will turn into Drake's Bane. Vice versa for the Chaos combo. Strange specifics aside, it's just simply a further combo extension, making both combos five hits each. There is no positional involved in this hit. Always use Drake's Bane when you get it, it's just good. Level 68, Mirage Dive. This is a buff to jump. Using jump will grant you access to one use of Mirage Dive, which is a single target hit for 200 potency. The buff lasts for 15 seconds, so you can't hold on to it forever. Simply just use this anytime you use to jump. This is also a ranged attack, allowing it to be used from far away. The notable bit is that you can set this to be its own button, or replace jump in the actions window. Action change settings are big for Dragoon, so be sure to pick what you like best. I'll be keeping it separate. Level 70, Life of the Dragon, and the Strand. First, simply, Gaskogel's Blood of the Dragon buff is now Life of the Dragon. This amounts to it now being a 15% damage buff. Neat. More importantly, Gaskogel is now an entire mechanic on its own. After using Gaskogel, we will be given three stacks of Nestrand ready, and Gaskogel will turn into Nestrand depending on your action change settings. Both buffs last for 20 seconds. Nestrand will spend one stack of Nestrand ready per use, and has a short two second cooldown so that you don't try to spend them all at once. It works the same way as Gaskogel, but does a base 300 potency to the first target, and 150 to all additional targets. In essence, we've gone from hitting Gaskogel once to four times within that 20 second time limit. Since Gaskogel is on a 60 second cooldown, we'll be doing this every single minute. Single target and AoE, this is going to do some damage. Especially when you consider that Gaskogel is buffing Nestrand by that 15% as well. This is where Dragoon is really coming into its own. How busy the job gets begins with Nestrand, given that so many attacks. There's some big changes for the opener we have to go over, and it'll be pretty obvious when you see it. First off, we've moved Battle Litany and Land Charge back one GCD. Now that we have a fifth combo attack, we have room for that. Given party buffing is extremely important, at least in decent parties, we're going to try and get Battle Litany to do as much as possible. Most jobs are getting big changes to their overall rotations by level cap, so moving it back is less suspect than you might think. Plus this sets us up for down the line and our future skills. From there, it's double weave after double weave. This is only going to get better, or worse, as we level more. Our Gaskogel is double weaved with Life Surge since Drake's Bane is just as strong as Full Thrust. There's no reason to wait, and it's an easy weave to do. Plus it's one we'd do later down the line anyway. From there we just combine all of our other attacks with an Estrand to spend all three uses. Mirage Dive comes in last because it's our worst skill. It does the same damage as Gears Gogol, but with no other benefits. But it's still free damage, so might as well use it. Then finish off the combo. From here, alternating the two combos will last about as long as the dot from Chaos Thrust. At 60, we were overriding the dot slightly early. Now it's perfectly aligned. So if you for some reason weren't, Alternate between both combos from now on. Double dotting when there's two enemies is still a gain. Chaos Thrust is just that good. As for AoE, things are looking just as busy. 
Jump still takes a back seat since it's single target, which means Mirage Dive is far to the back. The strong spamming in AoE is going to do big damage, so we want to double weave constantly to get them out. Stormblood is probably the biggest expansion for Dragoon. Nothing comes close, but that doesn't mean we won't get some great skills ahead. Some of them come with Shadowbringers. Level 72, Kurth and Torment. This is the third hit of our AoE combo. Same size and shape as our first two. It does 150 potency of damage to all enemies hit. Make sure to do all three hits of the combo in AoE, and otherwise just enjoy the flashy animation. Level 74, Jump Mastery and High Jump. This is another damage buff to Jump. High Jump does a 400 potency hit to a single target. This used to be more important, but time changes a lot. Level 76, Lance Mastery and Raiden Thrust. The way this is worded sounds way worse than it is. Where it says increases the potency of Vorpal Thrust to 130, that is the uncomboed potency. It doesn't mention that the combo potency has also been boosted to 280 potency. Overall, this skill is just potency boosts to True Thrust, Vorpal Thrust, and Disembowel. More importantly is Drake's Bane getting an additional buff. After using Drake's Bane and gaining Draconian Fire, True Thrust will turn into Raiden Thrust. It has the same combo effect as True Thrust, but does 280 potency of damage. The 30 second buff timer is just how long combos remain unbroken, meaning we essentially now have a one infinite length combo. This skill will get a further important effect, but until then this is a cool animation for another simple power boost. Level 80, Star Diver. Anytime you enter Life of the Dragon, you now also get one use of Star Diver. It has a 30 second cooldown, ensuring that you cannot use it twice under any circumstances. It is a gap closer and a 5 yom AoE on a target's location. This does a powerful 620 potency to the target and 310 potency to all surrounding enemies. On just two enemies, this is now over 900 potency. So not only is it a huge hit to a boss, it is gigantic damage in any AoE situation. Every life of the dragon, use Star Diver and aim for the enemy that will lead to the biggest splash. The one problem is that the animation lock of Star Diver is all but guaranteed to clip your GCD, no matter what. Doesn't matter how close or far from the enemy you are, there is a very long animation lock. You do not want to ever double weave this. This is a forced single weave. As soon as your weapon skill goes off, Star Diver immediately so that the lock is minimized. which makes it very simple to put it into openers. For our single target opener, just put the skill in after full thrust. We're out of double weaves we can do, so a single weave of just Star Diver. In AoE, you can push High Jump and Mirage Dive back even further. Such a strong AoE hit is going to take precedence over a middling single target attack. It's a waste to not use High Jump, but it will always be the least important. Also make sure we're using Curse and Torment in our combo. The additions are very simple, but at the very least Star Diver is a big, satisfying attack. Endwalker is going to lack in that aspect, but it has one of my favorite skills. Level 82, Enhanced Curse and Torment and Draconian Fury. The enhanced part of this is that Curse and Torment will now grant us Draconian Fire, just like Drake's Bane. This allows us to use Raiden Thrust, but now also Draconian Fury. Draconian Fury is the AoE version of Raiden Thrust, replacing Doom Spike. It does a 130 potency AoE, same shape and size. This is significant for our level 90 skill. Level 84, Enhanced Winged Glide. This gives us our first skill with charges. Winged Glide can now store up to two charges at once, with each charge still taking 60 seconds to obtain. The moment you use one charge, the cooldown will start ticking. Being able to store multiple uses of Winged Glide is really powerful. If you get situations where you have to move out of range of an enemy, back to back, you can Winged Glide in both cases. You won't have to rely on Elusive Jump as much, but it remains a powerful option for moving both away and towards enemies. Level 86, Lance Mastery 2, Heaven's Thrust, and Chaotic Spring. More cool new animations for simple power boosts. Full Thrust is now Heaven's Thrust, doing 400 potency to a target. Drake's Bane has also gone up to 400 potency to match. Chaos Thrust is now Chaotic Spring. 
This is a 260 potency hit, 300 potency positional, and 45 potency dot for 24 seconds. That's a 360 potency dot, and total 660 potency of damage under ideal conditions. Level 88, Enhanced Life Surge. Life Surge now also has charges, two of them just like Winged Glide. It still has a 40 second cooldown, but being able to store multiple uses is always a benefit, especially when you are going to try and only use this on Drake's Bane and Heaven's Thrust. It makes it very easy to overcap when also trying to get these under buffs. Which, remember when I said that at the level 50 opener? Well now we can actually put that into practice. Try and always life surge under buffs if you can help it, such as under Lance Charge. Level 90, Lance Mastery 3 and Worm Wind Thrust. This is where Raiden Thrust and Draconian Fury matter more than just damage. First, Gear Skogel is now 280 potency and Nastrand is 360 potency. Just power. More important is that our gauge has been expanded with the first mind's focus, the two scales on the right. Every time we use either Raiden Thrust or Draconian Fury, we are given a stack of the first mind's focus. When we have two stacks, we can use our level 90 skill, Worm Wind Thrust. This is the same size as Gear Skogel and Strand, but with a pointless 10 second cooldown. It does a 420 potency hit to the first target and 210 potency to all enemies after the first. Once again, a strong hit for a single target that also makes for some great AoE. We'll get to use this a little bit more often than Gear Skogel. As long as we keep up our rotation, we'll keep getting uses of it. It takes two full combos to get a use of Wormwind Thrust. That's fast in AoE, but a little less so in single target. In both situations, fire it off as soon as you can. The only reason you would want to hold on to a use for a few GCDs is if buffs are coming off of cooldown. Why use Wormwind Thrust unbuffed when it could be used under Lance Charge? Don't try to get more than two stacks of First Mind's Focus. Two is both our cap and how many you need to use Wormwind Thrust. Even if you want to hold it, if you will overcap on focus, just use Wormwind before you do. And now to our opener. Not much has changed. We merely extend how far ahead we look to see the Raiden Thrust will give us a use of Wormwind Thrust. And we have to fit in that second Life Surge. Just slot in Life Surge where we had Mirage Dive, weaving it with Nastrand. Move Mirage Dive behind Star Diver because again, weakest skill has the lowest priority. It coming in so late won't even be a problem, we have time. The same remains true with AoE. Just throw out Wormwind Thrust when you have it, and use Life Surge twice. Because of how you prep wall running, you might even have Wormwind available before you even start the opener. So feel free to throw that out right before the opener. It might be unbuffed, but we don't exactly have a lot of weaving room available. We'd overcap on First Mind's Focus, potentially losing us uses of Wormwind, making an unbuffed use the preferred option. This wasn't a significant expansion for us, but I sure love Wormwind Thrust. It's just a really cool skill. Though you might prefer the ones in Dawn Trail. These are going to be the culmination of all our practice. Level 92, Enhanced Dragonfire Dive and Rise of the Dragon. This is the Mirage Dive of Dragonfire Dive. You are given 30 seconds to use Rise of the Dragon after every use of Dragonfire Dive. This is a ranged attack, doing a 5 Yom AoE on your selected target. So it works the same as Dragonfire Dive, but without the gap closer. It's also slightly stronger at a base 550 potency. Given you know how you've been dealing with Mirage Dive for a good few levels now, you should know exactly how to use Rise of the Dragon. And unlike Mirage Dive, this is actually really strong in AoE. So you're not going to just throw it out just because. It's a big, unique looking hit. Use it every time you Dragonfire Dive. Also, make sure you check your action change settings. Level 94, Melee Mastery. Just some power boosts. The parts I want to mention are that Heaven's Thrust and Drake's Bane remain in parity, both doing 440 potency. Wormwind Thrust is already stronger, and Star Diver has gotten to an even higher 720 potency. Level 96, Lance Mastery 4. Vorpal Thrust and Disembowel are also getting power boosts. Vorpal Thrust is now Lance Barrage, and Disembowel is now Spiral Blow. They're really cool to watch, but they're otherwise just boosts to 340 and 300 potency respectively. 
Spiral Blow still also gives Power Sage. Level 100, Enhanced Star Diver and Star Cross. And now we have our third Mirage Dive, this one off of Star Diver. Using Star Diver will allow us to use Star Cross. We have until Life of the Dragon ends to use it, not just a separate timer. If Life ends, Star Cross is gone. Star Cross itself works very differently. It's a 5 Yom AoE on a selected target. It does a massive 900 potency hit to them and 450 potency to all enemies in range around it. It's not a gap closer. It doesn't have the animation lock like Star Diver, but what it does have is a painfully short range. You've by now realized that everything except your base single target rotation has really good range. If it doesn't itself have a gap closer and force you close to the target, it can be used from really far away. Star Cross is essentially a point blank nuke. You must be right next to the enemy, max melee range at best. It only can be used within three yams, smaller than the size of the actual AoE effect. So while this is by far your biggest, most important attack, one you need to use every minute, it's a potentially difficult one to use. If there are to be any major changes for Dragoon coming in future patches, I expect the range is going to be buffed, if only to 5 yams. It's not a big range increase, but it will matter. And one final time, check your action change settings. That covers the full Dragoon toolkit, but that final set of skills really changed things up. Our opening was already pretty full now with all the little additions, but now we have two more versions of Mirage Dive that always have to come after the skills that grant them. From here, we have one of the openings Dragoon can go for that puts party alignments first. Let's go through this full opening together to explain why we do it like this. We delay our buffs until after Chaotic Spring only because of aligning the buffs to maximize how much they benefit the party. This also should maximize how much it benefits you. Lance Charge goes along with Battle Litany for this reason. From there we use Gear Skogul to buff the rest of our opener as well. The Life Surge weaved with this will make Drake's Bane crit. The next phase of the opener is getting our Mirage Dive-like skills out. High Jump with Nestrand and Dragonfire Dive with Nestrand will get both of those ready. We need to weave in Life Surge again, so we fire off Rise of the Dragon to ensure it catches any buffs. Specifically, an Astrologian card might still be running, so get the big hit out over the final Nestrand. Then Star Diver still needs its own weaving window, so now is our last real chance as we get toward the end of the opener. We've been Star Cross and Nestrand to get the final important hits in, with Mirage Dive being of little importance at the rear. If any skill is going to miss buffs, this is the one. But it should still fit in as well. Start your next combo and you should get your Worm Wind Thrust out. It's a very hectic, but overall straightforward opener. Buff up and then launch your attacks. The neat thing about all this though is, you can jumble up the order of most of the attacking skills and still fit everything under buffed. As long as you aren't delaying the uses of stuff, filling every weave as much as you can, everything will get used. It's flexible in that way, if you know what you're doing at least. Now let's go through the opener with the karaoke opener. This is why we'll say the names of the skills as they are used to give you an idea of the pace of the opener beyond just how it looks. Be ready for a lot of skill names to cut each other off because some of the names are way longer than the time they are being used. True Thrust Spiral Blow Chaotic Spring Al Litany Lance Charge Wheeling Thrust Disc Google Life Surge Drake's Bane High Jump Nestrand Right in Thrust, Dragonfire Dive, Nestrand, Lands Barrage, Rise of the Dragon, Life Surge, Heaven's Thrust, Star Diver, Fang and Claw, Star Cross, Nestrand, Drake's Bane, Mirage Dive, Raid in Thrust, Warm Wind Thrust. For AoE, you probably already understand how we'll be handling it. Buff up, throw out the big AoE hits, and double weave like crazy. High Jump and Mirage Dive remain in last, especially with the high potencies of the Dawn Trail attacks. Just like with single target, you can adjust the order of skills as needed, so long as you're getting everything out while buffs last. That covers the long and short of Dragoon. It's a smooth experience with few bumps. Despite the slow speed, it still feels fast and often busy with Life of the Dragon. It remains my main job for a good reason. Thank you for watching this Dragoon 1 to 100 leveling skills guide. Feel free to give feedback or ask questions on what might still be confusing to you. 
I am always seeking to improve, as should you. Don't stop with this guide, even if I succeeded in helping you improve. Please leave a rating, comment, sub, those really do help creators. You can also come watch me on Twitch, or even go follow my Patreon. The links in the description will take you where you need to. Have fun in your adventures across Tyrol, may the power of an ended hogs stay waste to your enemies.